Jano at the ASEAN Cybersecurity Center of Excellence here in Singapore, just right across from the iconic uh, historic hotel of Singapore. And today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Zhou Kaixia, who is a threat, uh, cybersecurity threat researcher and expert from Taiwan. Mm. And he's going to be sharing with us, you know, his insights on web tracking and browser fingerprinting. So thank you very much, Kaisia, for your time today. You gave a really long talk yesterday about uh, web tracking browser. and browser fingerprinting, and these two are different. So can you tell us what is web tracking? Uh, so web tracking is basically like uh, whenever there's a visitor visiting a website, the website may install some identifier into the visitor's uh, browsers. So when the visitor is trying to access the website again, the website will notice that it is a return visitor. So after we identify the visitor, then the website can collect the user's behavior and the personal information. And this information can then be used to infer their interests and perform something like ad targeting or uh, user behavioral profiling and something like that. So if I say, take an example that many people will be familiar with, say Amazon, right? Mm. Okay, so if I visit Amazon and you know, I buy shoes, mm. right? Um, I log in with my Amazon ID, Amazon password, and then I browse the shoes category. So the next time I go to Amazon, Amazon will remember this. Mm. And yes. then it will show that, it will assume that I'm still looking for shoes. Um, yes. And more of a way, uh, maybe when you're looking at other websites, and maybe your Amazon will learn that uh, you also want a laptop from judging from the website you're visiting. So this is kind of a web tracking on a cross site, and it can be a serious privacy harm. Yeah. So, okay, so if I take another example again, so I then, okay, after I visit Amazon and look for shoes, I find that. Um, I cannot find anything I want on Amazon. Then I go to Alibaba, say, for example, and look mm. for shoes. Then Amazon knows that I went to Alibaba and look for shoes, and Alibaba knows that I went to Amazon and look for shoes. Okay, so, and then, um, say, if I go to another e-commerce website, say, um, what is the Shopee here in Singapore? I, I don't know whether it's uh, popular in Taiwan. So Shopee, um, even before I... Um, start searching, Shopee will know that I am, I have been searching for shoes on Amazon and Alibaba. So what would be the reason for this um, web tracking and how, how is it actually uh, practically implemented? So I assume that's through cookies. Uh, yes. So if we, ca can we disable cookies or? Uh, the problem of disabling cookies is that it will make many websites simply break. So for example, like a lot of, uh, like uh, we just mentioned that we can log into Amazon, we can log into Alibaba, this uh, functionality requires cookie. So we have to live with uh, accepting all cookies. So it's kind of like we want privacy or we want functionality. Yeah. Right, okay. I noticed that sometimes when we visit websites, it's, um, depending on the website, sometimes they say, you, you know, you can revisit your cookies associated with our website. So in that case, um, if we select as few cookies as possible, for that particular website, would that help minimize the privacy intrusion? Uh, yes, so there are essential cookies and cookie used for tracking. And however, the problem is that most user doesn't really, uh, re re don't really read the privacy policy, doesn't really care about the cookie consent banner and just accept everything. So making tracking still possible. All oh, right. Okay. So you're, you're saying there's a, I didn't even realize this. So there's a tracking cookies and non-tracking cookies uh, that we yes. can, all oh, right. Okay. So actually if we take the time and, you know, um, select just the non-tracking cookies that will be a less intrusion into our privacy. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. But not, obviously not all web websites have this uh, option, right? Oh, uh, yes. There are some websites just simply inject the tracking cookie without really asking. Right, okay, um, that's uh, quite worrying actually. Um, and of course, uh, I guess the, the, the main motivation behind cookies, uh, tracking cookies, uh, for example, is really t for uh, marketing purposes, isn't it? Yes, the main reason for the web tracking is still for marketing and advertising. And of course, there are some other uses like, like uh, fraud detection, but mostly it's still used for marketing and advertising. So these cookies that's collected, um, by the website, say Amazon collects the cookies, the tracking cookies, and then do they just use it for themselves or do they sell it to other marketing firms? 
uh, it really depends. There are some companies trying to collect a lot of data, and we call it a data broker, and then the advertiser will buy the data from the data broker. And there's also Amazon just trying for the end sale, and, and they maybe do not share with some other third party, so it really depends. Ah, oh, right, okay, so you talk about these uh, data brokers, so they are buying the information from... From basically everywhere. A lot a of possibility. Wow, okay, that's uh, quite uh, revealing. Uh, I, I, I know that uh, cookies have been a big problem, but uh, I didn't realize the extent of the issue and yeah. uh, its impact on our privacy. Um, so I guess legally there's um, no sort of uh, big regulation coming down to websites to say that you cannot put cracking cookies. Uh, like in GDPR, there are actually some uh, regulation about it. It's quite a complicated piece of legislation and yeah. I don't think that there's a concrete explicit um, uh, outlawing of uh, placing cookies. It's really, there's some soft uh, clauses that allow people to put cookies as long as these uh, data subjects uh, consent to it. But as you say, most of the time we just take yes without understanding. Yes. Right, okay. So now coming to our browser fingerprinting, what is that about? Um, after you talk to us um, and you say there's a website that allows us to check how unique our profile is, I check my profile and I'm very unique and that really scares me. <laughs> I didn't even realize. So tell us uh, what is our browser fingerprinting? So browser fingerprinting is that uh, usually the browser will leak some information through several channels like the uh, screen resolution, the time zone, uh, and this information really depends on the user configuration, on, depends on the browser, on the operating system, on the hardware, etc. So the tracker just collect uh, all pieces of information, combine them, and we call it browser fingerprints. So the browser fingerprints can be used to identify users and thus performing web tracking without using third-party cookies, which we just mentioned. So it's basically like a web tracking without using cookie. Okay, so if I take the example again of Amazon, right? Going to Amazon and looking for shoes. How is this browser fingerprinting working? In so this example. So suppose that like you go to Amazon and you reject uh, using cookie for tracking, and then Amazon can still use uh, some technique like browser fingerprintings to identify that you are trying to you're looking for shoes on some other website. Okay. So okay. So Amazon knows, say, for example, that I use Firefox to mm. to browse Amazon. Okay. Yeah. So it it collects information about the fact that I'm using browse, the, the browser Firefox. Mm. Um, and then with browser fingerprinting, it also collects the info. It can also collect the information that I am looking for shoes. Y that's what you're saying. Well, I would say the browser fingerprinting is more like a subset of the web tracking. So it's and maybe even if you don't have the Amazon uh, account login, mm. then the Amazon is still collecting information about your viewing some products about uh, like shoes. That even if you clear the cookies, even if you do not accept Amazon's cookie. Mm -hmm. And just by using a fingerprint, it knows that it is you that, that is uh, viewing the product like shoes. So after it may, maybe someday you log into the Amazon's account or you go back to Amazon's site, the Amazon knows that uh, you are looking for shoes, even if you don't have you do not have the Amazon's cookie installed or you do not accept Amazon to use cookie to track you. Uh, so it knows because um, from previous uh, data that it has collected about my at my activity using the browser, it knows yeah. my browser um, DNA. So yes, it's kind of like a, a browser's DNA. So even if you don't have a cookie installed, so as long as sees uh, this bro this browser fingerprints, it's like oh, it's the same one. It's the same one looking for shoes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. Right. And so, and what can we do with this? Threat. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> So uh, there are many browsers that protect users from web tracking and browser fingerprinting by default. For example, like Brave or LibreWolf provide uh, countermeasures against the uh, web tracking techniques and uh, browser fingerprinting. So in addition to changing the browsers, there are also some browser extension aims to uh, mitigate the uh, web tracking and browser fingerprinting. For example, most people will just use the uh, uh, uBlock origin to block the trackers or use the like, clear URLs. And the software is open source and free to use and can be easily installed. So it's not, uh, it's not all bad, is it? Um, there's some possibilities to 
to reduce the risk. Okay, great. Okay, so thank you, uh, Kaisia, for your time today to tell us about um, web tracking and browser fingerprinting. And so hopefully that brings uh, awareness to our audience in terms of what they should be aware of and what uh, mitigation measures that they can put in to uh, protect themselves from uh, all this uh, privacy intrusion. So uh, thank you very much, Kaisia. Thank, uh, thank you. you. Thank you.